Genetics research. The field of genetics has the potential to improve human health and nutrition, but many people are concerned about the effects of genetic modification, both in humans and agriculture. What is the right policy balance between the benefits of genetic advances and their potential risks? Stem cells. Stem cell research advocates say it may successfully lead to treatments for many chronic diseases and injuries, saving lives, but opponents argue that using embryos as a source for stem cells destroys human life. What is your position on government regulation and funding of stem cell research? Ocean health. Scientists estimate that some 75% of the world's fisheries are in serious decline and that habitats around the world, like coral reefs, are seriously threatened. What steps, if any, should the United States take during your presidency to protect ocean health? Water. 39 states expect some level of water shortage over the next decade. I'm particularly interested in moving to Arizona in this. <laughs> and, and scientific studies suggest that a majority of our water resources are at risk. What policies would you support to meet demand for water resources? Water will be the oil of the 21st century in terms of its uh, problems. Space. The study of Earth from space can yield important information about climate change. Focus on the cosmos can advance our understanding of the universe. And manned space travel can help us inspire new generations of youth to go into science. Can we afford all of them? How would you prioritize space in your administration? It's an interest, uh, issue of great interest to me. Scientific integrity. Many government scientists report political interference in their jobs. Is it acceptable for elected officials to hold back or alter scientific reports if they conflict with their own views? And how will you balance scientific information with politics and personal beliefs in your decision making? Research. For many years, Congress has recognized the importance of science and engineering research to realizing our national goals. Given that the next Congress will likely face spending constraints, what priority would you give to investment in basic research in, in up upcoming budgets? And finally, health. Americans are increasingly concerned with the cost, quality, and available health care. How do you see science, research, and technology contributing to improving health and the quality of life? These are questions that as I, th I hope will have now convinced you, although this is a selected audience and you probably already realize it, but I hope would have convinced the public when they read about them that these issues are not fringe issues, they're the very issues that are vital to the health welfare and well-being of our society and that's why I personally am spending time on this. Thank you. Today at the City Club we are listening to a special program featuring Dr. Lawrence Krauss, Director of the Center for Education and Research in Cosmology and Astrogeophysics at Case Western Reserve University. We'd like to welcome guests at a table hosted by the Great Lakes Science Center. Now we'd like to return to our speaker for our traditional City Club question and answer period. Before, before I take the first question, you just reminded me, this may be my, la well, this will be my last talk here while I'm living here full time, I assume. But I do want to uh, thank the, uh, I know my colleagues from the Great Lakes Science Center are here and it reminds me, I have some very good friends here as well. Um, I just want to thank the community for the support that they've given me while I've been here. I, uh, I've always said that I'm overappreciated in Cleveland and underappreciated in the rest of the world. <laughs> anyway, okay. okay. Uh, Dr. Krauss, my name is Ward Pallotta. Um, you, were in the, you were on the front page of the Plain Dealer just a few days ago uh, in advance of this meeting. I'm wondering if there was anything to be learned from that achievement in the media uh, to get on the front page of the New York Times with this issue. Uh, well, it, it would be a great... Uh, a small step for a journalist, but a giant leap for mankind. Um, uh, the, uh, the fact that actually, the interesting thing is that the fact that it was on the front page of The Plain Dealer is something that's very interesting because um, uh, I can give credit, in fact, to the, and it, it, I'm very impressed with the, the fact that uh, if you look at most newspapers around the country, almost all newspapers have gotten rid of their science reporters. The major science reporters in the country, some really famous people, some really well-known people, have all been fired. The Science Times and the New York Times have been cut back in size, <clears throat> and in my mind, in certain aspects, quality. But, uh, but you can be proud at least that Cleveland has a very good science reporter, John Mangles, who did a story, and he's able to get things on the front page, and I think, and I think we're fortunate for that. Uh, but it's not so easy elsewhere. And, um, and, the, and, and, the, and as I say, I know a lot of, on the New York Times in particular, because I, I have written for them a lot in the past, and I know a lot of the science reporters, 
when I talked to them, they continually said, we have to try and get this. Uh, it's not our job. You know, we're fascinated by this, but we have to try and get the political reporters to, to, to write about this. And, and that's just much harder. That was where this really hit home. Um, it was, they can write about evolution on the front page for some reason because it's a, you know, it's a, a hot button issue. But if it, if it smacks of the word politics, they suddenly lose their mandate. And um, it's unfortunate. It would be, um, I, I was, and I think it's, it's not, so, I, by the way, I, I should tell you that the piece I wrote for the Wall Street Journal, I originally submitted to the New York Times, which showed no interest in it. Uh, and in my opinion, the uh, op-ed page of the New York Times has generally been anti-science in the last years. I'm very impressed with an op-ed that just got produced today that I just saw about, about evolution. But uh, if you look at it, it's, um, it's, it's been, in fact, marginalized science for the most part. And I'm, I've really been disappointed in it. Uh, I think the reason that the Wall Street Journal published it is because this is an economic issue. And business people realize, the key business people realize, that if you don't support research 25 years from now, we're not going to have the standard of living we have today. And, and that, by the way, is one of the reasons why these 14 questions have been, have been expressed as part of a group now called Innovation 2008, because innovation and economic competitiveness are perhaps the way that we'll get the rest of these issues slipped in to the, uh, to the popular uh, uh, focus. Hi, Sandy McPherson. Sandy McPherson. Do you plan a side-by-side -side presentation of the responses to this, uh, these 14 questions? And would you consider having uh, expert um, uh, commentary about any false facts or scientifically un indefensible presumptions as part of that? Well, uh, those are really good points. I don't think we've thought that far yet. We really want to get the candidates to, uh, to, to answer the questions. I will tell you, we thought about it in the context of the debate. The question is, what, would, what should the debate format be? And the first question is, who's, who should the moderator be? Should the moderator be a scientist? Um, most people felt, of ultimately, the moderator should be a, you know, a well-known TV journalist. But part of the problem is that asking a question and asking a follow-up are two different things. And um, uh, asking a follow-up requires some level of confidence in the issue. So one of the things we proposed was, in fact, a, um, a moderator who was a well-known TV journalist and a panel of scientists who would be there to ask follow-up questions. And uh, I don't know if that scared people off as well. But that was, so we tried to think exactly. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, that, that is always, well, I was going to say it's, it's the th reason, I think, that, many of, that this scares people. When it comes to issues of science, uh, facts, usually count. And, um, and, and, and therefore, and therefore it, being wrong is often obvious. And, 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 uh, and people are, are afraid of it. And, and therefore, that's one of the reasons I think there was some hesitancy. I say that somewhat lightly, because people aren't that afraid of being wrong. Um, and and I, I've seen, I see it happening in, in, um, in the issue that I talked about, uh, that's becoming such a ridiculous issue that the Speaker of the House has seemed to have reversed her policy on it, offshore drilling, as if it matters. Uh, that's becoming an issue that's gaining traction, in spite of the fact that the facts are, and the facts are clear, that it's not going to affect the price of gas now. It's probably not going to affect the price of gas in the future. At best, it's 10 years in th down the road. It probably won't be in full production for 30 years, at which point it'd be producing, what is it, 200,000 barrels a day versus 85 million barrels a day that, that are used. So, I mean, it's, it's just all of the facts make it clear that it's not an issue, but it's becoming an issue. So maybe, you know, maybe the, what I said about, about, uh, when it, about having wrong facts and science is embarrassing isn't so embarrassing anymore. Yeah. Uh, thanks for stopping by, Dr. Krauss. Uh, Dave Taggart here. I was wondering, is there any plans after this election cycle to perhaps use this collation you put together to push for things like teaching basic logic and critical thought in high school. That would give you, a, you know, four years later for the next election cycle, that would give you people who are trained to handle facts and would probably appreciate this a lot more. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for the question. I'm a, big, um, I'm a big fan of education. 